This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. The Emergency Medical Minute is excited to announce that we are now offering AMA, PRA, Category 1 credits via online course modules. To access these and for more information, visit our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.com backslash CME dash courses, or simply click on the link in our show notes and create an account. We're going to talk about intubation um, and specifically hypotension in intubation. So there's a bunch of things you want to think about when you are dealing with a patient who is hypotensive and needs to be intubated. First thing is a lot of these folks, as long as you can bag them and find a way to get them through it, you can resuscitate them before you intubate. And so what I mean by that is that either through IV fluids, right? So getting them resuscitated with fluids or blood or whatever it is they need. And then the other part is preparation. So, you know, when you think about what happens when someone's intubated, the physiology of it, what happens as far as like what happens with your blood flow back to your heart? So they drop their preload, right? And so their inspiratory effort helps with blood flow back to the heart. So when you drop that, right, your negative inspiratory pressure in your chest is gone. And so you have a huge drop in preload. So if a person's hypotensive and then you do that, you're gonna make them even more hypotensive and they can arrest. So volume is one, and then the second is being ready. So being ready means, okay, well, if they're acidotic, hitting them with some bicarb, making sure that you're helping that acidosis so they don't arrest from acidosis. Two is having things like phenylephrine or epi ready push dose. And so with those, I think it's thinking two steps ahead. And when things are crazy, it's hard to do that, but it's something that you wanna to keep in mind. So. Say you have a patient who comes in and their blood pressures are like 70 over 30s, they're really, really sick, and you are gonna need to intubate them. The first thing I would do is ensure that you are getting pressure bag volume into them if you got your access. Second is make sure you call for the meds and have the meds ready that you are gonna need post-intubation. And so that includes phenylephrine, 100 micrograms of phenylephrine is something that can, you can push really easily. The thing about phenylephrine that's different from like epi is that it has no inotropy, it's all peripheral vascular, right? It's alpha. And then epi will give you inotropy plus alpha if you need the inotropy as well, if you're worried about the cardiac function. Then on top of that, the acidosis piece is you want to think about. So if this is someone who's hypoventilation or is really acidotic, like a COPD or having that bicarb, knowing that the provider may want bicarb and having that ready. And then the last piece on this is ensuring you have the right meds that you're going to be putting these people down with. So Atomidate is a good med in that it doesn't generally cause a lot of vasoactive issues, right? And then when you think about the other things that we use, so succinylcholine, right, that's your paralytic. Generally, that's not going to cause any major issues. But if you're really worried about someone, you can switch that Atomidate out and use ketamine. So ketamine is a great drug because that's going to increase your heart rate and give you that almost like a catecholamine type picture without any really effect on your blood pressure. You know, Atomidate can still cause blood pressure issues and ketamine is, is even less. And then post intubation, right, there's a period of time. It's not like one minute. It's like five. It can be 10 minutes, right? They can continue to be hypotensive. So having those meds ready and considering not using meds like propofol, continuing a thing like ketamine or some other type of sedation that's not as vasoactive. So next time you have a patient who's super hypertensive, who may need to be intubated, think volume resuscitate, blood resuscitate, whatever you need in terms of resuscitation piece. Have yourself ready to take on a hypotension with push dose meds like epi or phenylephrine, and then know that this can be prolonged. Uh, and what are you going to do with that? The Emergency Medical Minute would like to thank our sponsor, Swedish Medical Center, for helping fund our nonprofit organization and make this podcast possible. Donations are essential to our organization to cover operational costs and fund the creation of our online courses offering AMA PRA Category 1 credits. So if you enjoy our show, and if you're able to make a one-time or recurring donation towards our organization, any amount is helpful. Please click the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.